I am here today to talk about juvenile justice. I'm sorry I always go in to talk about murder and or (laughs) kids murder. I mean, I feel like if you were, it it would suggest that the world was in a better place if you were like, we have to talk about how the the little marshmallow bits and lucky charms are made. Uh, True. (laughs) That would be, I would love to have that conversation whenever anybody's like, what are you working on? I'm like. Trust me, I don't think you want to hear about it. It's really going to bring down the mood. <laughs> do, do you want? Do you want to hear a like? I don't know if this is whimsical because it's a wartime fact. I was amazed by it though. I was just reading a book called I think The Secret History of Food by Matt Siegel, which talked about how there was in World War II an ice cream boat that's made ice cream around the clock for the armed forces. Wow. Right. And there was a sense at the time, apparently, and also in World War One, that like American soldiers were so dependent on ice cream as a source of morale that like we needed to keep providing them with ice cream in order to win the war. And the thing about that is that I think it's probably true. <laughs> it, it suggests like a deeper understanding of the human psyche than I suspect anything in the rest of this conversation will. It sounds bizarre until you realize it actually is the most logical thing. It is the most logical thing. Best military strategy I've ever heard. <laughs> Honestly. Because seeing that in quotes, like on the, the DVD, best military strategy I've ever heard. I mean, that's Just so smart. Rice, right? Yeah. Yes. Just like keep feeding our boys ice cream if you do nothing else. Nothing else. This is the way. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't intend it to be like this, but I do see a segue here, which is that my sense is that kind of the way in the United States, at least for, you know, if not for our entire history as a country, then at least for most of it, we have designed prisons and kind of the system of incarceration and all its forms based on an opposite understanding of human behavior, right? Like if it, if that there is an alleged logic to that Mm -hmm. because like if a good boy in the Navy needs to fight the axis of evil, then we have to feed him ice cream to keep him going because good boys run on morale and ice cream and nice movies and pictures of Right. They're sweethearts back home. Right. Yeah. Right. I was trying to think of who would be a pinup at the time, but I kept thinking of Greer Garson. And it, no, it's not. No one. I don't, I don't even know that is. Of Greer Garson. She was in Mrs. Miniver as like a nice mom. I bet I bet there was one freak who had a pinup <laughs> of Greer Garson in his footlocker. He was not a nice kid. <laughs> so good boys run on nice things. But in jail and prison and whatever juvenile justice thing we have at the time or is for bad boys Mm -hmm. bad boys don't run on normal incentives criminals don't run on normal incentives they don't run the way humans run and they are motivated by like increasing levels of hopelessness yeah weirdly even though no other human being is and i feel like the whole thing falls apart so interestingly when you remove this pin of like, what if criminal are human, you know? 